Welcome back to Snippet Coder and we are back with another video. In this video, we will learn how to create variable products in our WooCommerce admin series. And this is the added product screen. And from here, we can add the attributes. Like if we click here on the add attribute, you can see here new attribute has been created here. And from here, we can put the name of the attribute. Like we can put here size and the size we can put large. Then we have extra large and here we can save it. So now if we go to that product, so here you can see whatever the attribute we have saved that is coming here and these attributes will be used in our variable product creation. So before starting the video, if you are new to our channel, subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified about our latest videos. Thank you. So first of all, we have to modify our product model file and here we will go to that model folder and there we have that product model dot dot file and here we have to add list attributes and the name of the variable is attributes is equal to and we will initialize with the empty array and now we have to create this model file also and we will go to the bottom and here we will create class attributes and here we have the variable of string name string values and then we have list type of string options and then we have to create the constructor here and here we have this dot name this dot values this dot options and here the name will be used for the attribute name that is example as a size or color or anything else and the values we have to provide that values of that particular uh, attribute for the size we have to provide the values of large extra large you can say medium small and also for that uh, colors also for the attribute of color we can provide the values of red color black color whatever the option we have to provide here and this array will be on the basis of the values which we provided in our application and here we will do the mapping of that data attributes dot from json map string dynamic json and here we have name is equal to json name and then we have the values here and the values we have to get it from the options here options dot cast string and here we have to put join and we have to split those value on the basis of that uh, pipe separator and then we have the options here and the option we will get from json options dot cast string and this will be kept in the form of array then we have the function for two json also and that will be used for saving our attributes in our database and all and here we have map string dynamic to json and here we have final map string dynamic data is equal to new of map string dynamic and here we have data name is equal to this dot name data options is equal to this dot values dot split and we will split the values on the basis of that pipe separator and then here we have to provide some static values and that will be variation is equal to true by default we will make the variation true here because the attribute we are going to use for the variable product only and then we have the data visible is equal to true and here we will return data so now we will modify here also and here we will pass this dot attribute and here also we will check if json attributes is not equal to null and then we will do the for each loop json attributes dot for each value and here we will fill attributes dot add new attribute and here we have dot from json and here we will pass v so what we are doing here we are checking here if that json attribute is not of null then we are doing the looping here with the help of that for each loop then in that attributes variable we are just adding the data on the basis of that value which is coming from this loop and we are using here attribute dot from json and here also to json method we have to modify here and we have to pass this attribute also and here we will check if this dot attributes is not equal to null then we have data attributes is equal to this dot attributes dot map and here we have v v dot to json and here we will do to list and here also what we are doing we are checking here if this dot attribute is not of none then we are just filling that data attributes with this dot attributes and we are doing mapping here and the mapping we are doing there to json and that json will be come from here and then we are putting here to list so now let's move further to indicate the ui part also so now we will modify our product added page and there we will add the radio button for product type that is simple and variable product and here we go to that product added screen and here we at the bottom we will create one visit here visit product type and here we have that options is equal to simple 
or variable. In that WooCommerce, we have product of two type that is simple product or a variable product. And then from here, we will return new consumer and we are using a provider for our product provider, products provider. And then we have the builder here, context model child. And from here, we will check if model dot selected product is not equal to null. And then from here, we will return column visit and here we have the children's here and here in the else condition we will return here center visit and here we have the child here and from here we will return circle progress indicator and here inside the children we will have row visit and here we have the children's here and here in the children's we will return here option dot map and from here we will return flexible visit and we will rename it to rd option and from here we will return a radio list title and from here we will put to list and here we have the title here and we will have text visit rd option and then we have the group value and we are using here model dot selected product dot type and here we have the value here and we are using a rd option then we have the change event that we will cover later on now we will return this product type from here before the price we will put here product type so let's run the application to see this product type is coming or not and here if i click on the add product so now you can see here we are getting that radio button simple and variable so here if i click on any edit button so now by default selected type of product type is coming here so now let's move further to add the attributes and all. So now we will modify our provider file to have this functionality workable or that whenever we select any of the product type that will be work in that case. For doing that we have to go to the provider file and here we have the product provider and here we have to add one function here and the name of the function is update product type and we will pass the value here and here we have selected product dot type is equal to value and from here we will call notify listener and we will call this one from here and from here we will call model dot update product type and here we will pass the value here so what it will do when we will change any product type here it will update the value here in our model so now we will add the attributes functionality here and we will go to our initialize state function and here we have this dot product model dot attributes is equal to mtra that will be the case of that that will be the case of our add so we will put here and then we will have this dot product model dot attributes dot add and by default we will add the first empty data here new attributes and here we have to create the ui for our attribute and we will get the visit here visit attribute ui and here we will pass the index and from here we will return container Inside that container, we have the decoration part and we have to show some box decoration here. And here we have the border here and we are using a border dot all color. We are using a colors dot gray color 200. And then we have the border radius here and we are using a border radius dot circular 10. And then we have the color here and we are using a colors dot gray color and that will be used for the background color. And then we have some margin here and we are putting here edge inside dot all five and the padding we are using here edge insert dot only and we are using only for the bottom here 15 and then we have the child here and we are using a column visit inside that column we are using a row visit and there we have to put and there we have two input box and the first one will be for that name of the attribute and the second one will be used for the values of that attribute and the third column that will be used for our remove button the remove row inside the column visit we are using a children's and there we are using a row visit and the main axis alignment we are using a main axis alignment dot center and the cross axis alignment we are using a cross axis alignment dot center and then we have the children's here and there we are using flexible visit and here we have the child here and the first child we are using a form helper and there we are using the snippet coder utility form helper dot input field with label and then we have the context here then we have the icon here icon icon start web icon and the key name we are putting here name underscore dollar index so we are going to have multiple rows with that 
same name therefore we have to put the index here and then we have the label name here and we are putting a name and then we have the hint text we are putting a nothing and then we have the on validate function and we are checking here if on validate dot is empty then we will return here attribute name is required in the else condition we will return here null and then we have the on saved value and here we will have this dot product model dot attributes and here we will put the index here dot name is equal to on save value and then we have the initial value and we are using here this dot product model dot attribute index dot name and here we have the obstruct text and we are putting here false and then we have our border color border focus color and we are using a theme of context dot primary color and same we have to do for other also and here we have that prefix icon color and here we have the border color and then we have the border radius here and we're using it 10 and then we have the padding left and we are putting a zero same for the padding right we are putting a zero and then we have the show prefix icon we are putting a false and then we have the on change event and then we have the label font size and we are putting a 15 and the font size we are using a 15 and the flex we are putting a one same way we have to copy this and we have to paste here then here we have to change it to value here we have that values and here we have attribute value is required and then here we will change it to values same here values and here we will check if index is not equal to zero that means this is not the first row then we will show here container and here we have the padding and the padding top we are using a as inside dot only top 30 and here we have the child here i'm using a column visit and here we will show icon button the on press event we will cover later on and here in the icon we are showing here icon start delete icon in the else condition we are putting here empty container so now we will pass this attribute ui here just with the index zero just for testing purpose and let's run the application to see is it working or not so here if i click on the add product so now you can see here that ui is coming here but that delete button is not coming because this is the index zero so if i change that index to one that will not work because we don't have any data over there so now we will make it more dynamic by adding the add attribute button here so now we will create one more visit here and we will have visit attribute list and here we will return column visit then we have the main access alignment and we are using a main access alignment dot start and then we have the children's here and there we have to put one button here and we are using a form helper dot submit button and the name of the button is add attribute and here we have that on type event that we will cover later on and then we have the border radius here and we are using a 8 and then we have the width here and we are using a 100 and then we have the font size and we are using a 12 and then we have the button color here and we are using a color start gray color then we have our text color and we are using a color dot black color and then we have the border color and we are using a color start gray color and then we have our height here and we are using a 35 and here we will create list view dot separated and here we have shrink wrap true and then here we have the physics here and we are using a scroll physics and then we have the item count here and we are putting here product model dot attributes dot length and then here we have the item builder and we are using a context index and from here we will return column visit there we have the children's here and we are using a row visit and there we have the children's and we are using a flexible visit and here we are using fit flex fit dot loose then we have the children's here and we are putting a attribute ui and we will put the index here in the separator builder we have to put here context index and we are using a divider so now we will call this attribute list from here and for doing that we have to put a condition also here visibility and we will have children here attribute list and we will check here visible on the basis of model dot selected product dot type is equal to variable so attribute list will only display if we have our that product type of variable so now let's rerun the application to see and here we will click on the products then we click on the add product and here you can see we are getting a simple and variable 
If I click on the simple, we are not getting any attributes. If I click on a variable here, you can see here we are getting the attributes here. If I again click on the simple, you can see that is hidden. If I again click on the variable, it will be display here. So now let's add the functionality for the add attribute also. So for doing that, we have to create one more visit here. And here we have add attribute. And here we will do set state this dot product model dot attributes dot add new attribute and we will call this add attribute from here so now let's rerun the application to see is it working or not so now if i click on the variable so now if i click on the add attribute so you can see here if i click on that add attribute a new container is created for the attribute section here so if i again click here you can see new container is created here so now add the functionality for the remove container also and here we have remove attribute and here we have set state then here we will check if this dot product model dot attributes dot length is more than one then we will have this dot product model dot attributes dot remove add and here we have to pass the index here and we will copy this and we will paste here so now we will call this remove attribute from here and we will go to our attribute ui and here we have the icon for remove and here we will put remove attribute and we will pass the index here so now let's check is it working or not so if i click on the remove here it is getting removed here so if i again click here it will get removed so only one row will be there and we don't have any remove button for the first row so again if i click here add attribute and here also if i click again so now if i add that data here color and here we have the size here so now if i click on the delete so delete is not working properly because we have not click on any save button to save these attribute values that's why it's treating all the section as a same so for doing that we have to do some code here in the on change event and here we have and here in that values on the on change event we have to put here this dot product model dot attribute index dot values is equal to value and same we have to do here also and this is for the name so it will whenever we put any data in the text box it will update that in the our collection of the attributes so let's reload the application to see it is working or not so now if i click on the variable and here if i click on the add attribute again if i click on the add attribute in the first one i will put here color in the second one i will put here size so now if i delete the color it will delete only color section so now you can see here it is working fine now so now let's add some data here and save the data so let's see is it saving in the api or not so here we have test product attributes and first one is color and the values we are putting here and the value should be in the separator of pipe separator and here we have a red then we have the pipe separator black size we are putting here m separator large separator extra large and then we'll put here price 50 sale price 60 and here we will put test so before doing the save part we have we have forgot one thing we have to modify one section of our save button also and here we will have this dot product model dot type is equal to provider provider of and here we have products provider context listen false and here we have selected product dot type so now let's reload the application to save the data so we have this data here so now let's save the button to see is it working or not so now data has been saved so let's see so this is the product test product attributes so now let's click on the edit here and here you can see data has been saved in the server all the attribute has been saved in the server that is color and the size here so that's all in this video in the next video we will cover the creation of that variable product on the basis of these attributes so i hope you like the video don't forget to subscribe to the channel like comment share i will come back soon with another awesome videos thank you all